Each state, of course, will face its own unique challenges for vaccine rollout. One in particular, Maine, for example, has access to plenty of dry ice because it's used to packaging all that seafood up there. But it faces other challenges. Dr. Nirav Shaw is with us now. He's the director of Maine's CDC. Uh, Dr. Maine's been conducting a vaccine rollout dry run of sorts. What have you learned? Well, Shep, thanks so much for having me on. And you're right. Uh, over the past several days, we've conducted a dry run, an end-to-end -end test of how all of our plans to receive vaccine, distribute vaccine, and ultimately, initially, starting to work with hospitals to get vaccine into people's arms, how that process will work. I'm pleased to say that although it was a significant logistical challenge, as your report noted, we learned a lot and we feel like we are in a good position if or when the U.S. FDA authorizes either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine in the near future. Doctor, the testing process is relatively easy compared to vaccinating, yet we're failing miserably at testing. Lines are long, supplies are limited, results are delayed. The overall Fauci goal was 5 million tests a day. We've never reached that. Yesterday, they were less than one-third that number. Why should we have any confidence that the vaccinations are going to go well when the testing has been a failure? Well, what I can tell you is that in Maine, we have been planning for the rollout of any potential vaccine since very early on in the pandemic. Although testing has proven to be challenging, even there, here in Maine, we've got a number of public testing sites. Our test positivity rate, even though it's increased, remains among the lowest in the country, and our testing volume on a per capita basis remains among the highest in the country. We intend to replicate that same success with respect the vaccination. These successes don't happen by accident. They are the result of deliberate, thoughtful, intensive planning. Our goal with respect to vaccination is to follow in that same pathway. It will be challenging. There will invariably be bumps along the road. But our goal is to be able to vaccinate all main people with velocity as well as with equity. Mm. Dr. Shaw, you, you told Mainers today that there's no fairy tale ending, as you put it, to this pandemic. What do you mean by that exactly? And, and when might we expect spread, hospitalizations, and death realistically to go down? Well, Shep, there is a notion out there, a hope, that the arrival of a vaccine will bring the entire COVID-19 pandemic to a robust and quick end, that it will go out the same way that it came in, with a bang. Unfortunately, pandemics don't end that way. They end slowly. And so even though a vaccine will hopefully be forthcoming, and we hope that it will start bringing case numbers down, the way that pandemics end is that they tend to peter out. As a result of that, many of the public health measures that many of us have grown accustomed to, like face coverings, will probably be continuing as, as good practice. The other thing is that continuing even for as how the long? pandemic- Another year? It's, it's entirely conceivable that COVID-19 will be with us for several months, even after a vaccine is introduced. Mm. For me, it's like a speeding train. Yeah. Even though the train is going really, really fast, the time between when the brakeman pulls the brake and the train actually starts slowing down and stopping can be a very long time. That's why the best thing that everyone can do now to prepare for maximal vaccine success is to keep the train moving as slowly as possible now. That way, when the vaccine comes out, the brakeman can push the brake and we can slow as quickly as possible. Dr. Shaw, good luck to you and, and everyone else involved in the process. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.